Hello and welcome back to part three of this AlphaZero tutorial series where we're going to take an in-depth look at the neural network architecture that DeepMind used to create the most powerful intelligence in the world for playing Go, Chess, and Shogi. Before we dive in though, I want to cover a couple of important concepts you may not be familiar with, but there are tools that can possibly improve the results of all your deep learning projects. The first is batch normalization. Normalization refers to the process of squishing widely different values into the same range, usually between 0 and 1. Normalizing input data speeds up training, smooths gradients, and makes the training more stable, meaning you are less likely to get stuck in a local optimum and the loss is more likely to continuously drop rather than spike all over the place. If the input layer is benefiting from it, why not do the same thing for all the hidden layers? It turns out the benefits are synergistic. Batch normalization allows each layer of a network to learn by itself a little more independently of the other layers. It also helps reduce overfitting and allows higher learning rates. The details of how it works are beyond the scope of this video, but it involves creating trainable parameters for the mean and standard deviation of the values output by the normalization layer. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more. The second concept is residual blocks. As neural network depth increases, accuracy gets saturated and then degrades rapidly. Too many layers leads to higher training errors since gradients get too small to be meaningful. The solution is a skip connection which allows the input to skip the entire layer and get added to the output. This allows gradients to propagate through a very deep network and unlocks the full benefits of deep learning. This works much like a dry wet knob in effects processing. It mixes the original signal back into the effect. Here's a visualization of a Photoshop effect being applied and then added back to the original image. Again, if you want to learn more, I'll leave a link in the description. Here's the big picture of the Alpha Zero neural network. It's made of building blocks, so let's look at the overall design and then we'll take a microscope to each type of block. At the top, the raw game data goes into a simple convolutional layer. Below that, we've got a tower of 40 residual convolutional layers. The tower then feeds into a value head, which outputs the expected value of the state, and a policy head, which outputs probabilities for each possible action. In other words, it's exactly the same output as vanilla actor-critic architecture. Now let's take a look one by one at each part. First, let's see what the encoded game state looks like that's being passed in the first layer, specifically for the game of Go. Chess and Shogi are slightly different, but the concepts are exactly the same. The Go board is 19 by 19, and so is the input. The current position of all of Black's pieces are encoded in the grid, followed by identical grids for the previous seven time periods. Then we have White's current position, followed by the previous seven time periods for White. Finally, we've got the current player's turn encoded on a 19 by 19 grid, all 1 if Black is to play, and all 0 if White is to play. The result is a 19 by 19 by 17 stack which goes into the neural network. Now let's look at the very first layer we hit, the convolutional layer. The input we just described passes straight into a convolution with 256 filters and a 3 by 3 kernel. If you don't fully understand convolutions, I'll link an excellent video by Siraj in the description. Next we perform batch normalization as described previously and it passes through a ReLU activation which effectively clips all negative values to zero. Now we've got 40 stack residual layers. Inside each one is the exact same thing, so let's take a peek. First up we have 256 convolutional filters with a 3x3 kernel as before, then batch normalization. A ReLU activation, another convolution, more batch normalization, and finally, we have the skip connection where the original input is added back into the convolved output. And one more ReLU, just for good luck. Now let's take a look at the value head. Input passes straight to one filter, a one by one kernel convolution. We do batch normalization, it goes through a ReLU activation. We have a fully connected layer with 256 hidden neurons, another ReLU, and a final fully connected layer with a 10H activation which outputs a value between negative 1 and 1 for the state being queried. 
And finally, we have the policy head, which outputs logit probabilities for each possible move. Input passes to two convolutional filters with a one by one kernel. Then we do batch normalization. Pass it through a ReLU. And finally, through a fully connected layer, which outputs probabilities for each square in the 19 by 19 grid, plus one additional option for passing the turn. And last, let's have a look at the loss function and the gradient descent method. This is very similar to how we trained our actor critic. The loss function has three elements, the value loss, the policy loss, and regularization. Value loss is the mean squared error between the value predicted by the network and the actual value calculated through the Monte Carlo tree search. Policy loss is a cross entropy between the probabilities predicted by the network and those calculated through Monte Carlo tree search. If you're confused about this, go back and study my policy gradients math primer. There's a link in the description of my policy gradient methods video. Last, regularization helps prevent overfitting by adding a penalty as the weights get bigger. The equation for L2 weight regularization loss is C times the normal of theta squared. In other words, this is the sum of the squares of all the weights in the network. C is a parameter for controlling the strength of the weight penalty set to 10 to the negative 4 per the AlphaGo Zero paper. And this is the final loss function. Z is the value of the state calculated by Monte Carlo Tree Search. V is the value predicted by the network. Pi is the policy predicted by the network. And P are the actual probabilities calculated by Monte Carlo Tree Search. The momentum optimizer was used with the momentum variable being set to 0.9. The learning rate started out as 10 to the negative 2 and was annealed to 10 to the negative 4 after 600,000 iterations. All right, now that you've been firehosed with tons of theory, it's time to take a look at some code. You probably have enough information to replicate Alpha Zero's results if you had thousands of dollars in cloud computing credits on your hands. But let's scale this back a little bit and do something you can get good results training on your desktop GPU over just a few days. Let's use the Alpha Zero algorithm to build an AI that can master the classic game of Connect 4. This is Colin Scow. Stay tuned because in the next video we're going to get our hands dirty and jump into some real world code. The Move 37 course is coming to an end, so if you want to stay in touch, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scouster the Geek. See you again very soon.